Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. And as you can see, I am here at Crown Eurocars in St. Pete, sunny Florida day. A lot of you guys have been asking for some type of Italian car. You've been sending me those comments. You've been sending me the messages. You want to see some Italian cars and you want to see me drive them. Well, guess what? Thanks to Bianca and everybody at Crown Eurocars, today we're going to make that happen. What I have for you is a 2013 Maserati Gran Turismo Sport. Now, you might say, this car is five years old. Is there anything really to talk about? Uh, hello, it's a Maserati. Of course there's something to talk about. But anyways, let me give you a little bit of a history lesson on Maserati if you're not familiar with the brand. Maserati, it ends in a valve. It's got to be Italian. And if you're thinking that, you're correct. It all started a group of brothers in Bologna, Italy, back in 1914, decided to build their own car. Obviously, if you know your world history, you would know that a war was taking place from 1914 to 1918. That was World War I. Well, after the war was over, Maserati was full speed ahead, building racing cars, building cars for the street. And that's really where they put their heritage into it all. Formula One is really where they made their presence known to the world. And for many years, many racetracks built some of the greatest cars and beat some of the greatest cars all in the same time. Fast forward to 1997, Maserati, believe it or not, went out of business. And guess who was there to purchase them? Ferrari. And you could definitely see, since Ferrari purchased Maserati, you could see that resemblance of that Italian styling. So let's go ahead and check out this 2013 Gran Turismo. And we're going to go through, there's a lot of fun details about it. Favorite part of this car, hands down, is going to be the front end. Right there is that Maserati Trident. Now, if you've always wondered, why do they use a Trident? Why not something else? Well, guess what? It all goes back to 1914 in Bologna, Italy. Right in the center of the city was a fountain that was dedicated as the fountain of Neptune. And if you're wondering, well, Neptune, who's that? Neptune, remember the god of the sea, the Roman god. Yes, that's the Poseidon. If you're looking at uh, the Greek um, myth, you know, mythological and, and mythology. But with Neptune, he had this trident and they wanted to pay homage to Bologna uh, because of that fountain. And that's why we have the trident smack dab in the center. I really love what Maserati did with the grill. Now, what's interesting is that this grill is synonymous with Maserati. This design and shape goes all the way back to those Formula One cars, all the way back to 1950s. I really, really like the way they placed the logo here. And if you look, there's some beautiful body lines that start on the nose and go right into the hood. The front of this Gran Turismo is nice and wide. I like the shape of the headlights. I don't know if Tom could show you here, but they actually take the Maserati script and they put it into the lens of the headlight. Probably one thing that I'm not really the biggest fan of is these vents, they are metal. It's a nice metal grade to it, but they're not functional. There's just plastic behind there. And that is something that I think on a Maserati, especially a car that you're going to call it a Gran Turismo Sport, those vents need to be feeding those brake uh calipers and rotors and everything but you can see very nicely done with a little bit of chrome trim i like the flat black um splitter here remember this stuff is all going to be functional but maserati did a very nice job starting off with the front of the car very low very sleek let's go ahead and take a look at the side as you wrap around to the side now remember this is a 2013 so there is going to be some things that you're just going to have to understand that it's not a brand new car. But if you look here, even though it's a 2013, we have these beautiful wheels. Very, very nice shape. I like the style of the wheel. There's our Trident there. Um, you can see that they're running the Pilot Super Sport tires. So you know that this car means business. And this is a 20-inch wheel. So these are 35 series tires. 35 series means that th that's the height of the tire on the sidewall. And they're 245. So they're not super wide. I mean, if you look today, a Camaro uh, 1LE is going to have huge over 300 series wide. But this has a nice 245. I like 
the uh, Brembo calipers that they're running, a nice six-piston caliper. And remember, it, this goes all the way back to 2013. Also, if Tom could show you, the rotors are cross-drilled and fully ventilated. So it's funny how they went very high performance on the brake setup, but yet they don't have any ducts that are flowing air to cool those brakes. Because remember, at the end of the day, this car has a 4.7 liter V8, 455 horsepower. The problem is it weighs. It weighs over 4,200 pounds. And these brakes are going to take a beating if you go do a track event or an autocross event or even on a twisty, curvy road. But let's go ahead and continue down the side. You can see the nice curves of this Italian beauty. I really like these um, side vents here. This is another Maserati-specific tradition. These are something that go back to those early Maserati days. There's Pina Farina. Pina Farina is the company that designed the body, the coach work for this Maserati. They work with Ferrari. They've worked with lots of different brands over the years. Very, very great company. Lots of history there, not only between the Maserati name, but also Pina Farina. This color is absolute drop dead gorgeous. When Bianca told me that she had a Maserati Gran Turismo, I was hoping it was this color, this beautiful blue. You can see the nice metallic in it. Very, very nicely done. One thing I'm not really a big fan of is going to be this piece here. I think on a car that brand new was well over $150,000, this should they should have done something a little different. Maybe some piano black to make it match with the rest of the car. But still, at the end of the day, it's got that Maserati style. Coming back to the rear, I really like this rear uh, B pillar here that comes into the back. I really, really think that the Trident logo here is perfect. It, I think without the logo here, it would be too much blue. It would be a sea of blue. This breaks it up nicely with the nice uh, horizontal line there. And then out the back, on this car, you're not going to have any pop-up spoilers. You're not going to have any big wings. It's got a nice kick up to the trunk. And then they finish it off very, very cleanly off the back. There's that Maserati script. I really like the way they took the exhaust and brought it right into the bumper. Very clean, very crisp. If you look underneath, if Tom could show you, I just like the way even the bottom of the bumper, just it's nice and tight and uh, gives it a very, very athletic look to it. I think Maserati hit the nail on the head with these taillights and the rear bumper. Very, very clean look. But I told you about that 4.7 liter V8. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, there's the heart of this Italian animal. That's a 4.7 liter, 32 valve V8 engine putting out around 455 horsepower. This car is going to do zero to 60. I know when you hear this number, you're not going to be impressed. 4.7 seconds. Remember, this car does weigh over 4,200 pounds. Plus, it's a 2013. Things have changed. Even though it's been five years, I think cars, when it comes to technology, are like cell phones. They're accelerating at such a, a pace that it's hard to keep up. But I really like that Maserati decided to leave this open. And remember, the people who built this engine are Ferrari. So if you're somebody who's a big Ferrari fan that maybe can't swing $250,000, here's a car that at brand new was a little over $130,000, $150,000, depending on options. And you could have something that's going to have that Ferrari heritage, even though it's a Maserati. That's one of the nice things since Ferrari owns it. I really love the red valve covers. It gives it such a, uh, hey, I'm high performance. This thing is matted to a uh, ZF built. It's a German built uh, six speed uh, gearbox. It's a traditional automatic that does have obviously paddle shifting. Uh, does a quarter mile in about 13 seconds. So like I said, at the end of the day, these high performance numbers aren't mind blowing when you think of some of the cars that are available. But back in 2013, this thing was, was something to, you know, you could put up against a lot of other cars. But one thing you're going to notice in a second is the sound. That's where when you buy Italian, you're buying such a unique sound. And this car definitely has a ton of it. So let's go ahead and hear this animal. All right, guys, I am inside this 2013 Maserati 
Gran Turismo Sport, and it is a perfect balance of luxury and sport. If you look on those door panels, check it out. You're going to have this beautiful, it's like a silver weave of carbon fiber. Everything on the door is going to be a nice leather, especially on the door pull and that armrest. Probably the biggest zonk, if Tom could show you, is that window switch area. That's this hard black plastic, and it's very cheap feeling. I do like the aluminum looking um, door handle to open and close the door. Uh, it gives it a nice touch. There's also, if Tom could show you, the Bose sound system. Bose, very good brand when it comes to stereo systems, especially going back to 2013. My next, probably my biggest favorite thing so far, these seats. Very, very nicely done. I like the outside, that Maserati blue stitching that they did. I like the design in the leather. Now, these seats don't have a lot of bolstering, but if you're going to probably daily drive this, I think it's a really nice fit where it's not too much, too little. What's weird is, is that there's not a ton of cushion in the seats, but they're really comfortable. And I do like the Neptune um, Trident there. I also like the way that they have the vent in the back of the seat. It just it gives it a nice, nice look. Um, why don't you come inside and we'll check out the rest of this interior because there are a lot of nice features. Now, one thing that's very interesting about this whole car is that it is a 4951 weight distribution. So you're going to have 49% in the front, 51% of the weight in the rear. So they almost got it to a 50-50 weight. There's that beautiful carbon fiber I was telling you about. I do like the nice touch of the Maserati clock there with the Trident. Very, very nice thing. But this, it's weird. There's a texture to this plastic that's kind of, it feels a little weird. Um, but I do like the dash. It's nice and soft. Um, now, when you're looking at this, you're probably like, what is that? Remember, 2013. So these infotainment systems have come a long way. This one, even though if I were to go back in my DeLorean, to 2013. I'm not a big fan of this infotainment system. Way too many buttons. I don't like this black trim. This thing down here, it took Tom and I about five minutes to figure out how to get the air to just blow on us. So there's a little too much with the buttons going on down here, but I do like, if you look, they have some nice options here. You could actually put this car into sport mode, which automatically opens up the exhaust. You have ice, shut off the parking brake, and to shut off your traction control in a very, very nice little housing here. I think maybe they should have put that part here just to balance it out, that same finish, because that makes it look like it's lopsided. I do like the silver carbon fiber on the shift knob, and there's that uh, Neptune Trident right there, that Maserati logo. This does have an electric parking brake. I think that's where we're all going, guys. Uh, there's less and less cars that have manual um, parking brakes. Remember, this has a six-speed traditional automatic gearbox that is going to um, give us nice quick shifts. Uh, it's made by a great company called ZF. Uh, that's a German brand of transmission company. So it's, they've been around for a long time. And this does have the ability to where when you shift it, you could put it into that mode where you could actually go up and down the gears with the shift knob or with the paddles. And if we'll show you in a second how that's all displayed for you, but very easy to use. One thing right here that's probably going to be the biggest pain in the ass are these cup holders. If you notice where my hand is, it's blocking one or both of the cup holders at any given time. So you're probably going to have to do one of these deals if you're using these cup holders. And these are the only cup holders in the car. So very, very small and in a very weird location. One thing I also want to point out that it just made me smile because I can remember when cars, all of them used to have these, is check it out. There's an actual ashtray. So uh, going back to the good old days of uh, people smoking in their cars and everything, uh, nice little ashtray there for you. Just something that reminded me of uh, of my youth. What's interesting, not that I smoked, that's just my youth as in I was in cars that had ashtrays. I just want to point that out. Never smoked a cigarette, just throwing that out there. But anyways, um, you can see here, lock and unlock the doors is located right here. Kind of a little cumbersome because it is in front of the shift knob. So you know, it's just little things like that, that yes, over time, when you drive this car, you'll get used to, but at first it's just different. And that's that quirky Italian, um, layout of gauges and buttons that could sometimes, uh, be in a, in a car, uh, like the Maserati or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. 
Let's focus on this steering wheel here. I'm in love with the steering wheel. It, it feels like a racing steering wheel. I mean, I've raced cars for quite a while, and this thing, the grips, very, very nice size. Um, I do like the logo right here in front of you. You actually have some nice buttons to uh, handle your uh, radio and your phone and all that, but it is a nice shape and it's fully electric. So you could actually position this thing 20 which, way, 20 which ways from Sunday um, to your liking where you could have it come out, go in, whatever you, you want to have set up. Now look at the gauges. Let me have Tom show you the gauges. Very simple, but also it's got some elegant feel to it. I like the chrome trim around the gauges. I do like the way um, they're laid out. And if you look smack dab in the center there, there is our uh, shift indicator. So I know it looks dated, and it should because this is a 2013, but it is very clear to read, and it's very large. And you can see how when you go through the gears, it pops up. Also, this is when we're in manual mode. So you could go up and down the gears here um, in manual mode uh, while you're driving the car. And that's another thing. Check out, I don't know if time could swing back around. I don't think I've ever seen shift levers as large as these. So when you're on your track or you're going down a twisty road or you're doing an autocross, you're going to, no matter where your hands are on the wheel, you're going to be able to shift up to that next gear or shift down to the next lower gear because of the size of these. Now, they are plastic. It'd be nice if they were a nice maybe aluminum or, God forbid, titanium. But um, they are one of the biggest ones I've ever seen behind a steering wheel on an automated gearbox like this. So good job for Maserati doing that. Uh, another thing I would like to also point out is if you look up on the roof here, if you look at the A pillars and on the on the uh, inside of the roof, we do have full Alcantara. So this is another thing that when you're in this car, yes, it's about sport performance, but it's also got that nice luxury feel. It really breaks up the white. There's a lot of white leather in this car. Obviously, being a Maserati, they use some very, very nice leather. Um, I like the blue stitching, but I like the way that the ceiling breaks up all the white in here, um, especially when it comes to the back seats and everything. But I don't know about you. Sitting in this car and talking about this interior is one thing. Let's go ahead and take it for a spin. All right, guys. We're inside this 2013 Maserati Gran Turismo Sport. And as you can see, look who I have on another ride with us. It's Tom, my yep. camera guy. I'm back. We are gonna take this car for a little test drive. And, you know, I figured off of the last video, a lot of people liked how Tom was giving that perspective from the passenger side of things. And I obviously am behind the main wheel here. But like I said earlier, this interior with the leather and just the way that it feels when you're in it, it makes you know that you're in something special. And automatically, one thing I've noticed right away is it actually has great visibility. That's one thing I think a lot of cars, they have the styling, but when it comes to actually driving it every day and you feel uncomfortable, it, it, it hurts. But with this, I'm able to look around, everything is window-wise is great to look at. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I have it in sport mode, which remember the sport mode is gonna change that exhaust tune, it's gonna adjust the sensitivity of the throttle and the steering, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the manual mode and we're gonna go ahead and roll out of uh, Crown Euro cars. And definitely wanna give another big shout out to Bianca for helping us put this together and bringing this for you because a lot of you guys have been asking for some type of Italian car and especially one that I'm gonna drive. Right off the bat, the sound of that V8. 4.7 liter, 32 valve, 455 horsepower, you hear the downshifts. What do you think, Tom? Just from an aura, the aura of that sound. I love it. Uh, you can definitely hear it in the back. <clears throat> we took a couple video clips so you can hear it in normal mode and sport. Um, not everyone's going to drive it in a manual. Yeah, um, most people nice. at the end of the day are just going to drive it probably in automatic as they go about their normal day. Like I said, the automatic, it's a great gearbox. ZF has been around for a while now making gearboxes and it's a very smooth shifting and it's a six speed so it's not like you're going to be chasing through a bunch of different gears like a 10 speed or something like that so it's actually like i said at the end of the day 2013 it's a great performing transmission great performing engine and that sound you're just not going to find many cars that has that 
what do you think about the seat there? How, how do you feel as the passenger? You feel cramped? You feel uncomfortable? No, I, I really like them. You guys have probably seen the uh, ST that we did, the Ford Focus. Those had Recaro racing seats. Um, those bolsterings were very tight. And uh, if you're a wider person like I am, you're really hugged. Uh, these, they could do more in the bolstering, but they're leather seats and it's a Maserati. Definitely, definitely. So you want the luxury, you want to be comfortable. Tom, um, I, I, Tom I, got, I, got to, I got to interrupt you one second. All right. We just came to a light, like I said, this car, 4,200 pounds, we were talking about earlier. Not a lightweight, but with the engine and transmission set up in this car, you'll see when this light turns green, the performance is going to be there. And it actually, I think it feels faster than what the numbers say. I'm ready to Here we go. Out. You ready, you ready to find out? Remember, rear wheel drive, you just put it down, you go right through the gearbox. Very smooth shifts, very quick shifts. Very, very nicely done, Maserati. You're not gonna go and drag race this car and win, you know, a little trophy at your local uh, red light in front of your neighborhood, but you take this to a track day, you take this to an autocross event, you're really going to not only have a great time, but you're also gonna be able to perform and have that uniqueness. You go up to an autocross event, I don't know about you, you don't see a lot of Maseratis in the park. I've never seen one. Yeah, so this Maserati Gran Turismo Sport, it's, it's really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, merge onto this road here. It's a right-hand bend just to show you the steering. You're not gonna find a lot of body roll here. It transitions very, very nicely. Very good feel. And the seats do hold you in. How do you feel, Tom, as I go? I feel great. So they're not, like I said, they're not the Recaros, um, but you want to be comfortable wearing, or not wearing, sitting in these nice leather seats. Yeah, behind the um, wheel, it's really nice too. I mean, the- How do you like the steering wheel? I love the steering wheel. Like I said, I think my biggest zonk at the end of the day, and remember, I know I've been saying this a lot, this is a 2013. So if you're thinking 2018, with how everything is laid out in this car, you're not doing yourself justice, and you're not doing the car justice. I'm not a big fan of the layout of some of these AC controls here, Bottom button. but for the actual driving, like I said, when we went around that turn, I didn't have to worry about where my hand was on the steering wheel to shift into that next gear because these paddles are so large. So that's a nice thing. I'm not sure how much you can see of the wheel while he's driving. Um, it took us a couple minutes to figure out how uh, to place it and adjust it. Um, but Joe, you like, I like, you, I like it. you eventually it, found it. I, yeah, it, it takes some time to find that unique sweet spot for you but what's great is is that this does have the memory function so that when you get into the car and the well first of all when you get out of the car it moves and lets you get out but when you get back in it pops back down in that perfect place right where you left it. so at the end of the day i think you're going to have a nice balance of performance that italian design and really bang for the buck like i said down at crown euro cars you come down and, and talk to bianca this thing right now is sticking around 57. So with 14,000 miles, somebody did not enjoy this car. They saved it for you to enjoy it. One thing you wanna be careful of, like I am as I'm pulling back into the dealership, is it is a lower car, so you're gonna to have to be a little mindful of the nose of it. You don't wanna scrape it or rub it or anything on the asphalt. So that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to be careful if you're not used to driving a car like this. Um, but I'm definitely glad that you guys came along for this ride. Hopefully this satisf satisfied your, your thirst for that Italian performance. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the wrap up. All right, guys. So it's been a great day here at Crown Euro Cars. I wanna give a big shout out to Bianca for helping me put this together and everybody at Crown Euro Cars. This is their new dealership. It's only been here for three months. They just moved. This place, I'm telling you, is like a Disneyland if you are a Mercedes-Benz lover or they have some great pre-owned cars like this Gran Turismo Sport. But you can see how if you do have that yearning for that Italian style and that Italian performance, you don't have to go the Ferrari route or the Lamborghini route. There are other options for you. And at the end of the day, I'm sure you could see this 2013 Maserati Gran Turismo Sport. This one's stickered at 57 grand. It's only got 14,000 miles on it. You're getting a lot of performance. You're getting a lot of car from its 4.7 liter V8 to that interior that is to die for, to that Italian styling that just gets you excited every time you look at it and every time you start it up. But anyways, if these are the types of cars you like seeing on Rady's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you have not hit subscribe yet, 
what are you waiting for? We're, we're growing. Things are going well. I appreciate all of you that are on board. We're getting close to that 5,000 subscriber mark. We're over a million views. I have all you guys that have been through it since the beginning to thank. Check out my Instagram page and Facebook page, Rady's Rides, all original content all the time. And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.